Hello friends, in this video, I will give an overview of different different theories or approaches that explain the differences between spot price and the futures price. As we know, spot price is the price at which the contracts are executed for immediate delivery and settlement. We have to understand that immediate could include maybe delivery and settlement in next few days, let's say two days from now. However, futures contracts are defined to have a delivery and settlement days in the near future, maybe three months, six months, or could be in distant future, like a year or two years as well. Now, what explains the differences in the futures prices as compared to the spot prices? Let's say the spot price for a commodity is 10,000 today. The futures three months down the line could be available for, let's say, 10,500, which means there is a 500 rupees difference between the spot price and the price at which you can buy or sell that asset three months from now. So what explains this difference? Let's take an example of Nifty 50 futures on the National Stock Exchange to understand this difference. On the screenshot from the National Stock Exchange where we have the Nifty 50 futures listed, we can see there are future contracts available for expiry in the month of June, July and August 2023. Now, we see that the contracts expiring in the month of June 2023 have the highest trading volume, whereas the trading volume for the July contracts is lower than June 2023 and the trading volume for the August 2023 contracts is the lowest which shows that the market participants have highest level of interest in trading the futures that are expiring in the near future however if we look at the prices we find that the prices for the contracts expiring in the month of june that is the last thursday of june are lowest as compared to the prices for the month of july which are midway and the prices for the month of august contracts which are highest which means that more distant the date of expiry of the contract the price is higher in this particular case what we will also observe is that the uh, the underlying asset in each of these cases is of course same which is nifty 50 index so why is there a difference between the futures price and the nifty 50 spot price and why the distance futures are having a higher price as compared to the futures contracts expiring in the month of june which is the near future let's look at this in slightly more detail now if we see again the contracts are expiring on 29th of june 27th of July and 31st of August, which are last Thursday in the respective months. Also, we can see that there are open, high and low prices for each of these contracts. Prices for the month of June are lower than that for the month of July and the prices for the month of July are lower than that for the month of August. If we look at the volume, the volume is the highest for the contracts expiring in the month of June and then we see subsequently decrease in the interest of the market participants, which means that the market participants are more interested in hedging the risk for the contracts expiring in the near future. They will use the rollover future or the spread order future in order to roll over the contracts into the next if they want to continue to hedge their position in future. The last traded price is 18,646 for the contracts expiring in June. The price for the contracts expiring in July is 18,722. And then for the contracts expiring in the month of August, it is 18,805.20. But if you look at the contract parameters, the underlying is basically Nifty 50 index, which is the same for all these. And the underlying price is 18,562.25 which means that all these contracts are trading at a price which is higher than the current price of Nifty, which basically shows that the market participants overall feel that the market will be bullish. That is, the prices will be higher in the subsequent months. Now, in the next screens, we will see the cost of carry for all these contracts separately. We will observe that the cost of carry for the month of June is relatively higher as compared to the cost of carry for the month of July and the cost of carry for the month of August is even lower. Now which means that the more distant the contract the annualized cost of carry is lower. Now this is slightly a dichotomy. We will expect that the cost of carrying an asset for more number of months will be 
actually higher. But one thing we have to understand that the cost of carry is expressed as a annualized percentage, which means that more the distant expiry of the contract, the cost of carry is lower slightly because we are now in this case dividing by a time period which is higher. Now, one thing again we have to understand that the cost of carry in case of underlying assets like indices or maybe equities is only the cost of funds and also you can deduct if there are any dividends that are expected to come in the near future. In case of assets like commodities, there could be different components to the cost of carry. For example, the cost of warehousing, the cost of insurance, the cost of the damage to the goods, the cost of let's say air conditioning or storage at a certain temperature, the cost of security. But in case of let's say something like indices, you don't have to appoint any security people or watchmen over there. You don't need for example any warehouse to store it and therefore by and large the cost of carry reflects the cost of investing in the underlying asset which means the cost of funds and we will observe that by and large for the contracts that are listed on let's say national stock exchange or mumbai stock exchange the cost of carry for indices as well as the equities is very close to the cost of treasury bills which are expiring roughly in the next 91 days that is because most of these participants have access to low cost funds in the market and the government securities in the short term reflect the lowest cost of funds because that is the most risk free asset available in the Indian market. So here we see that for the contracts occurring in the month of June the uh, last credit price is 18,646 and the cost of carry based on that is 5.67% on the annualized basis. If we go to the month of July, the last traded price is 18,722 which is slightly higher and the cost of carry is 5.49% on the annualized basis. Now, as I explained, this is a slight dichotomy because the, the last price of the futures contract has gone up whereas the cost has come down. And then for the month of uh, August, we have the last traded price which is even slightly higher and the cost of carry has come down. This is because as I explained the cost of carry is on the annualized basis and the contracts for the month of August have more number of days for the expiry. Now having looked at the spot prices for Nifty as well as the futures prices and cost of carry for the contracts expiring in the month of June, July and August, let's try to understand what are the approaches or the theories that explain the differences in the spot price versus the futures price. There are four theories that explain the differences between spot price and futures price. The number one theory is the expectations theory or approach which fundamentally says that the market prices for futures contract reflect the expectations of the prices of those underlying assets at in the future depending on the date of expiry. The second theory is called the theory of normal backwardation which explains that the producers would like to make sure that they are hedging their risk of non-availability of the market or the price reduction when the produce is available in the market and therefore they are willing to accept slightly lower price as compared to the expected price in the future and therefore there is a normal backwardation or a lower price as compared to the spot price in the market. The third theory that explains the difference between the spot price and the futures price is the carrying cost approach or the carrying cost theory. I explained a little bit about that theory a few minutes back. Basically, it is the cost of carrying the underlying asset if you want to actually hold the position in the underlying asset. If you are a seller, you have to recover that cost definitely from the buyer because you are going to hold the asset for delivery in the future and therefore this theory includes that cost of carry in case of indices and equities as I explained which is reflecting the cost of funds in the market. The fourth theory is the integrated approach or integrated theory which basically combines all the elements of the previous three theories that are listed. Basically expectations theory, the normal backwardation theory and the cost of carry theory and which is a more realistic theory which is the integrated theory because actually the market forces look at all these three factors. What is the expected price of the underlying asset in the future? Uh, how much will I have to pay if I want to carry that asset which is cost of carry and the third thing is also it will help the participants hedge the risk of price reduction in the future. So let's look at all these four theories in more detail in the subsequent videos. In this 
video, I give you an overview of all these four theories which basically explain the difference between the spot prices and the futures prices by taking the example of Nifty 50 futures. In the subsequent videos, I'll explain you in detail uh, how each of these theories pans out and you know, we'll take different different examples to explain that as well. I hope you found this video useful. If yes, please do like and share this video and also put in the comment box if you have any queries. Thank you very much. Yes.